Good morning, Bayside. Would you stand this morning? I like that enthusiasm. Would you stand this morning as we just worship?
You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only, Lord. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Sing that again. And all the earth will shout your praise. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Last time. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. to someone around you and introduce yourself if you don't know them. Welcome them to church this morning. Oh, right. Good deal. You guys are just having way too good a time this morning. Is it good to be in God's house this morning? Amen, right? Following up on Easter from last week, it is just so good to be with family, be with God's family, be in His presence, worshiping Him, and just appreciating all He's done for us. So just want to bring a couple things to your attention. If you've never been here with us before or if you have never filled out a contact card, we would love to know who you are. We're not threatening. We, you know, we're easy here, but we just like to get you a little bit more information about our church and just tell you a little bit more about why we exist, what we do here. And uh, if you want to get on our email list so you have a, a little record of everything that's going on, and we got a whole lot going on this time of year, and I'm going to run through some things real quick with you. So if you'll just kind of button up and give me your attention for a minute. Everything's in the bulletin for the most part, so if you didn't get one, grab one on the way out, and you'll have all the information of the things we have going on. But drop that information card in the offering bucket as it goes by. I would love to contact you and just introduce us and let you know who we are. So, coming up, one week from tonight, we are beginning our group link. And this is our small group study. We're going to be doing it as an all-church this time. We're going to do potluck. We're going to eat together. We're going to do a little, uh, just a time of maybe worship and, and just have a good time around tables. But then we're going to be doing a study on Job by Francis Chan. Francis Chan needs no introduction. You know, know this guy. He is an amazing incredible communicator of God's Word. And we have a little clip 
that I want to show you for just a little trailer, just to kind of whet your appetite a little bit about what we're going to be doing next week. So, Josh, we got that. Go ahead and cue it up. We are living in such an arrogant time when everyone's opinion is so strong and there's so much division because everyone is so sure that they are right. And that's what I love about the book of Job because you, you see it's, it's a bunch of humans speaking to one another and they're arguing and trying to figure something out and then at the end God comes through and he speaks. You see, when, when we're going through the pain, it's so hard to not get myopic in our thinking and just, just think about how I feel at this moment. But we have to look at the big picture. That's the point of the book of Job, that again, we are here to bring glory to him no matter what comes my way. The book of Job teaches us to live life with the reality that we are being watched right now, that there's this battle going on and I'm somehow a part of it. We need that voice from God where his words cut through everyone else's and there's authority that is so needed for this generation. But the question is, is are we going to be humble enough to understand this message. Do you think there's any arrogance in our culture today? Folks, you do not want to miss this study. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So that's next Sunday. We'll start it at 5 o'clock. There will be child care, and we'll eat together, and then the kids will be dismissed, and, and we'll have some people in there uh, just kind of watching over them while we get into the study a little bit. So come and be part of it. Just be part of the family. Good way to connect if you're new with us and, and you haven't really had a chance to connect with other people here. This is a great way to do it. So we invite you to do that. Okay, so one week from this Friday, we are having, or for one week from this Saturday, we're having our yard sale. On Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you can bring stuff here from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock in the evening, late afternoon, early evening, drop the stuff off right here at church. That's, that's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Not this week, but the following week. We need help desperately, folks. And I know, you know, this is church, and so we all do last minute, right? We get it. There's a sign-up back there in the information booth. If you would be willing to come on any of those days and or on Saturday and help tag things and just prep them and get them ready to sell, we need your help. So please sign up. Let us know who's available and who can help. We have This is to fund our kids to go to camp. We're a long ways to getting there. So if you can be part of that, and we will have the, the, every student or every child that is going to camp will be here to help. That's part of the deal for us to subsidize them and get them to go to camp, that they're here to help. So they'll be here as well. So please take advantage of that. Again, a good way to connect and a good way to meet people um, if you haven't really been able to get connected here up to this point. Then a week from Sunday, we are going to be starting, we are going to have a little time of family fun here. We're going to have a, a Peter Pan pop-up play. Say that fast three times. <laughs> Wait a minute, kids, stand up. Turn around. Say that again. One, two, three. Peter Pan pop-up play. There we go. Great job. Give our students, our kids a hand this morning, will you? By the way, kids, you can be dismissed now that you've had your, your moments of glory. So we're going to have food, and we're going to have it kind of a theater style where we're going to have some nacho cheese and some hot dogs and, and just some other goodies. Just come and be part of it and have some fun. That'll be at 5 o'clock. We'll eat, and then at 6 o'clock, We'll have the pop-up play. They'll be in here during that hour setting up and getting ready for it to go. It's uh, being done by a, a theater company in Lodi called Changing Faces. And it's just a lot of fun to be part of that. So plan on that. And then we have Breakaway Registration is Open, which you guys have been hearing about this. We have a cap of 200 kids. Here we are, third week of April, and we are at a, like 130 signed up already. 
okay? So that is amazing in and of itself, but if you know kids that, that want to participate or want to be in it, make sure they go online. The registration's online. It's in the bulletin. Again, the website, I can't read it, but it's in there. You'll, you'll, you can figure it out. And uh, make sure you get them signed up for that, all right? And then I think that's about it except for Mr. Lane. Come on up, Dan. Dan is one of our veterans here, and many of you know, or most of you know, that we've been doing a thing, and we've been involved in an organization called Moving America Forward, which is, Dan, tell us about it. Thank you, Tim. Uh, those of you who know me know that I'm ardent about supporting our military. Even in times of peace, there's great demand for our forces to be ready at a moment's notice anywhere in the world. And this requires a great sacrifice from those who are in the military. Think about it. They go far from home. They join people they've never met to do a task that may require their life and relying on one another. So there's a way that we can honor and support them. And it's a group that I've been active with for about four years now called Move America Forward. It's located in Sacramento. I have a display table at the back we're doing a drive and a campaign to put together some care and gift boxes for our active duty military personnel. We'll put those boxes together. We have a list of things that are favored by persons in the military who are deployed. And then we're adding personalized notes to them so that they know there was a live person at home who thought of them. And I'll tell you from experience, even though it's more than 55 years ago, when I was in Vietnam and I received a care package, for a brief moment, I was home. And it had been a difficult time, as it was for all of us. 7,000 miles from home, not seeing anyone who was an American other than those in uniform. And it made a big difference for me. So we're encouraging you to do this. The cost is nominal, but there's a number of items. Number one is coffee. They love that. Number two is beef jerky. And number three is candy, obviously. <laughs> so we have a list of things to put together. Our contribution is we're going to include a pocket-sized New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs in it so that they not only receive the gift from us, but the gift from God. And so trust me when I tell you this will be well received. You don't have to participate by doing a box. Some of you may not feel like shopping. So there's other ways that you can do that. It costs about $18 per box to mail them. And so the Move America Forward, even if we send them the 50 boxes that we're hoping to do, they're gonna have to pay for posting them to military personnel overseas. You can contribute an amount of any, uh, any amount and designate it for that. Move America Forward is a 501c3 charitable organization, so your contribution is tax deductible Use it, you can use it for your benefit as well. If you donate $100, you'll get this refrigerator magnet that honors our troops. And if you donate $1,000, you'll get this challenge coin, which recognizes five of the branches of service most likely to be deployed. There are, for your benefit, seven branches of the military service. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, but also the Coast Guard, the National Guard, and the United States Space Force. So there's a number of ways that you could designate a recipient. If you have a family member or have a friend who has a family member who is currently deployed, give us their name, their rank, their mailing address, and we will see that they not only receive a box for them, but we'll make an effort to send five to six boxes so that the immediate troops that they're deployed with also receive the benefit of our gift. Simply let me know. If you have someone, I'll coordinate that with you. This campaign will be going on here for about three more weeks, but it goes on year round for our military personnel. When we go to move America forward, as several of our church members have gone, here's a production of putting together gift and care packages in excess of 250,000 packages a year, and yet they say Bayside Galt is here to help. So you're not 
one of the little people, you are recognized by them as being a contributor to their cause. Please consider joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Dan Lane. And our core values statement is reach wide, teach deep, and unleash compassion. Can you think of a better way to reach wide than to reaching our military around the world and unleashing compassion? As Dan said, just a little taste of home when they're a long ways from home. Be part of that. What a great way for the family to instill in our kids, our grandkids, what it means to support our armed forces because as we all know, freedom is not free, right? We need to protect our country and so we want to be part of that. So I think that's about it this morning for our announcements. We could go ahead and have the ushers come on forward. We're going to pray and we're going to continue in our worship this morning. Would you pray with me? Father God, what a privilege it is to be in your presence this morning just to worship you father we are here for one person and that's to one reason and that's to worship you in spirit and in truth to lift you up and see you glorified father we pray that you would open our hearts and open our minds this morning as we hear your word and as we continue to worship you in music we love you we praise you this morning and all god's people said amen wasn't easter amazing last week uh it was so encouraging just to uh, see you guys invite your friends and your family. Uh, and I think sometimes we just got to take, we had a full team last week, but sometimes it's just good to kind of zero back a little bit and focus on what we have. But I heard someone that last week accepted Jesus as their Savior. And hearing her family, it was amazing um, of hearing her story a little bit. And this song kind of talks about just coming to God's altar when we're hurting, when we're broken, and asking God to fill that. So let's sing this together. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought away. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today.
tell the world of the treasures you found. Anyone else having a horrible time with allergies lately? Yeah, have you seen it outside? When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's a word that'll bless your heart. You ever feel like that? You don't have much to give. I bring. More than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart, Lord. How much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor And all I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song I'll bring you more than a song For a song in its is not what you much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship it is all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. Amen. My hope is built on nothing Then Jesus blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Oh 
darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the land. My anchor holds. My Christ alone, cornerstone, the weak made strong, and the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then be him be found. Dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless to stand before the God, we pray that you would be that cornerstone in our lives, that corner to the building that holds everything together. And God, that when we go through those storms, when we go through those difficult times in life, God, we question ourselves, we question our relationships, our friendships. God, we would come back to the cornerstone of our life, that being you. The God of grace, the God of forgiveness, the God of direction, the God of wisdom that we so desperately need. God, I pray we'd remember that through each storm that we go through in our lives. God, we pray you'd bless this time together as we hear from our brother Ed, and I pray that, God, you would just speak through him in a powerful way as, God, you've done so much in his life. And we're just thankful for you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may grab a seat. I have the privilege of introducing our speaker this morning. Um, and you may, you may or you may not know this gentleman. Uh, this is Ed Weber. Would you give Ed a round of applause real quick? <laughs> Ed brings a whole cheering crowd, which is pretty awesome, um, with him. But he's got family and friends here just to support him. But if you've known Ed, I've known Ed over 20 years, probably close to 25 years. You know what God's done in his life. Um, and it's an amazing testament of God's favor and his grace and his life and his marriage and with his kids. And so would you one more time give Ed Weber a round of applause this morning. We good? All right. Good morning. Um, 
Wow, that was awesome, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I think we could just have Jason stay up here, and I don't need to speak. I think we can just listen to Jason for the rest of the day. <laughs> uh, I just I, I love him dearly. He's such a great brother. Well, um, welcome. And if, if you don't know me, my name is Ed Weber. I have the privilege of, of being a part of the, the leadership team here at Bayside. And, and my wife, Shelly, and I, we've, uh, we've been here six or seven years possibly eight years. I've kind of lost track, but this is our home. We love it here, and, and we couldn't imagine being any, any place else um, but here at, at Bayside in Galt. If you're a first-timer here, um, thank you. Um, I'm glad you're here, and uh, please come back next week. Tim will be speaking next week, and you can make a judgment then when after Tim has spoke. Uh, <laughs> uh, and for those online, welcome. Um, that you're able to, to come and, and spend some time with us today. Uh, Jason had touched on our, our service last Sunday Easter. If you were here, um, it was, you know that it was incredible. The vibe in the building, God was in this room. It was amazing. Uh, our hospitality team, you are phenomenal. Uh, what they had done out in the cafe was just second to none. I will put them up against anybody. And they just love to serve, which is so incredible. And of course, Jason and the worship team just hit it out of the park. And Tim's resurrection message was incredible. And with all of that happening, you know, that's kind of secondary because lives were changed, decisions were made for Christ last Sunday. And that's what it's all about. So um, let's just take a minute and pray. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for Bayside and Galt. I thank you for what you're doing here, Father God. You continue to pour blessings on us here, Father God. I thank you for the decisions made last week, God. It's just so incredible to see what you're doing and the work you're doing here. And we just want to lift this morning up. We want to lift this day up to you in your precious name. Amen. Well, I wanted to take a moment, and, and I, wanted, I wanted you to think about something. And I want you to think back to a time where you took a huge leap of faith. What was that like? What were you thinking about? What was going through your mind when you took that huge leap of faith? Were you scared? Was your heart racing? Now, I don't know what that may have been. Maybe it was uh, jumping out of a plane, skydiving for the first time, or maybe proposing to somebody or asking somebody out on a first date. And I don't know what that may have been, but just, just something that took and required a, a great leap of faith. Were you nervous? Now, we've all probably had those moments, and depending how old you are, you may have had a few more than, than others. But I was thinking back in my life about that, and, and years ago, I used to do a lot of backpacking out in the Yosemite Valley, and I'm not sure if you've ever had a chance to go there. It is truly one of God's most beautiful creations. Now, we would go into the valley. We'd be in the, into the Yosemite Valley, and, and we'd, we'd start there, and then we'd head out, and we'd head out to the, what's called the Lower Paiute uh, Valley, and then there's the Upper Paiute Valley. And then from there, a lot of times, we would head to a kind of a secluded area that was known as, as Tower Peaks. And while there, we would... We would spend a few days hiking and, and climbing, and I absolutely loved every minute of that. And I don't know what it is. I, I still love being in the outdoors and camping today, but just something about being out in God's creation, I think, and just the peace and the beauty of it. And this first slide here is an is a area. This is called Tower Lake, and, and that's exactly what it looks like. And, and that's where we would... Uh, we would make a base camp around, right around that area. The water is pristine, and it is clear as can be, but cold. And then this, this next slide is actually uh, what is Tower Peak. And you can actually um, climb the mountain, and uh, there's, a, there's a book up at the summit where you can sign it if you've, if you've made the climb. But one of the things I used to love to do uh, when, when I, I was out there was to rock climb. And basically, climbing is going up and coming down. Not too difficult, right? Well, one of the ways of coming down is called repelling, and, and you could repel. And that was probably one of the most ex exhilarating experiences in my life. 
you're hundreds of feet up in the air, you're strapped in, and there you go, over the edge. Now, this was about 45 years ago, and maybe 50 pounds lighter, but uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. So picture this. You've got your, they call them a swami belt, and yes, that's what they're called, a swami belt. You've got your helmet, you've got your climbing boots, your carabiners, your ropes, and you're all set. And you have to go out to this edge. And as you get out to this edge, you've then got to turn around, you're strapped in, and you've got to walk backwards, and then you get your feet to the very edge, and you start leaning back. And then you have to step off. Now, you'll see this guy here. This is the picture of a guy. And he's about to step off. But you'll notice that he's smiling, so you know this wasn't his first time. Nobody who does it for the first time is ever smiling. Trust me. A lot of prayers are said at that moment. But stepping off that edge was probably the scariest thing that I have ever done in my life. But it was probably one of the most rewarding. There's a million things going through your mind. But you have to step off the edge. And once I did, it was incredible. This next slide is just a, a slide of a couple guys coming down. They're, this is kind of the art of repelling. But what, what's so cool about this picture, if you look, look behind them, you can see for how far you can see, how vast it is. And what was so cool about this, what we would do is, as we would come down a little ways, we would... We would stop and we would, we would lock ourselves in and then we'd start kicking off the face a little bit and you'd start, you'd start looking around and then you'd rest there for a minute and you'd, you'd just rotate and you'd look around you and you'd see this vast view of what God's creation was and you felt like you could see forever. It was incredible. Now this last slide here is actually from the summit of Tower Peak and as you can see, the view is incredible, and the experience is indescribable. But what had to happen, I had to take that first huge step of faith. I had to have faith in the ropes, I had to have faith in the safety tie-offs, and I had to have faith in that swami. The reward was incredible, an experience I will never forget. I learned in that moment what it meant to put my faith in something besides myself. Now, that's one type of faith. Today I want to talk about another type of faith. I want to talk about your spiritual faith. So how is your faith? Where is your faith? I think maybe the real question should be, what is your faith in and who is your faith in? Now, for me, my faith is in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I hope it is for you, too. So what is faith? We hear that bantered about and talked about and said, but what is faith? Faith is the expression of hope that goes beyond the conscious mind. All that we hold rests upon faith in God. You see, faith is trust, and trust requires a relationship. As we put our trust in Jesus... We give up any illusion of depending upon ourselves only. And we recognize that faith cannot be measured. It can only be lived. Paul, he puts it this way. He's so good. In Hebrews 11, this is what Paul says, and it's real simple. He just says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Again, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. You see, faith allows us to be justified with, before God, and it allows us to continue in obedience. We all have the opportunity to continue living in faith and obedience to God. If we do, we will gain our inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ. Faith assures us and gives us the confidence that if what we hope for is real, it, it allows us to believe the promises of God, that obedience is worth it, and there is no greater reward. Ephesians 2.8 puts it this way, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Again, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, 
It is the gift of God. Have you accepted that gift? If you have that faith, how easy is it not to rely on it or to grow it or to question it? You see, it's important to remember that faith only applies to things not seen by man. We cannot see God, but faith allows us to have the conviction that what God promises us is true as though we could see it. John 20, 29 recounts Jesus this way. It says, Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Now, if you're like me, I often struggle showing and relying on my faith. And oh, thank goodness we have a patient God. He is so patient with me. (laughs) I can be such a chucklehead. Um, Yeah, my wife's over there. Yeah, yeah, you can. (laughs) But uh, he's just so patient. So how is your faith? Where is your faith? Now, when I ask myself that question, I'm a bit ashamed of the answer. If I'm honest, often it depends on what time of day it is or what just happened at home as I left. Maybe something happened at work. Heck, it could be about the day of the week. Now, if it's Sunday and you're a churchgoer, your answer would probably be, oh, my faith is is pretty strong. But the further away from Sunday we get, the more I drift back into faith in me and not faith in God. You see, I want us to to all think about our faith this morning as something that can be built, it can be strengthened, it can be increased. Faith is necessary and imperative in the life of the believer. Now, uh, many of you who know me know that I do have a theme verse, and it's Philippians 4.13. It's a real simple verse. Matter of fact, my daughter, uh, she had this made for me just so it was fresh of mind, and and Danielle, thank you. Uh, But it's Philippians 4.13, and it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cling to that verse, and I have faith in its promise, even though now and then I lose sight of that promise. You see, part of the faith equation is not about inventing beliefs, but about putting our trust in God based on what we can see in order to rely on him in areas that we cannot. Now, the Bible is filled with examples of faith. And faith is demonstrated by obedience to God, despite complete knowledge. Abraham is held up as one of the highest examples of of, of a trusting faith. His actions showed us that he was willing to trust God though he himself could not see how God's plan was going to be worked out. And I want to I get this to you, and it comes from Genesis, and it's from Genesis 22. So let's take a look at it. It's 22, 2 through 13. Excuse me for a minute. I have got a parched mouth. Allergies, Jason. Uh, and it goes like this again through Genesis 22, 2 through 13. Now it came about these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham and he said here I am then he said take now your son your only son whom you love Isaac and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you so Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac and he split wood for the burnt offering set out and went to a place of which God had told him On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Then Abraham said to the young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I and the boy will go over there, and we will worship and return to you. And Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on on his son Isaac. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Look the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for the burnt offering abraham said god will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering my son so the two of them walked on together then they came to the place of which god had told him and abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood and abraham reached out his hand and took the knife 
to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not reach out your hand against the boy and do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. And as it is said to, to this day, on the mountain of the Lord will be provided. Wow. What do you do with that? The amount of faith that Abraham shows there, I cannot begin to comprehend as a father, as a, as a grandfather. I can't imagine what was going through Abraham's mind. Now that was in the Old Testament. But we see examples today. We see examples around us, all around us, of people walking in faith and standing in faith. And I could share examples after example from my own life of how God's promises have come true even when my faith wasn't the strongest. You see, there was a period of time back during the economic crash of uh, 2010. Mm, excuse me. I got laid off. Now, when that whole thing started, I figured I'd have no trouble finding work. Uh, I was at the top of my field. My resume was loaded. No sweat. <laughs> oh, had times changed. The way to find a job had changed. Now it was about networking and mobile apps and clicking and loading and, and what a mess. It was on and on. Well, as I found out, there wasn't a big demand for a middle-aged white male in that current environment. And after that initial shock wore off, my wife and I, we, we got together on it, and we agreed that we needed to truly put and keep our faith in God and his plans for us. We didn't know what it was or where it was going to lead. There was some true humbling that needed to go on with us. Before that time, it was easy to talk about God, how good he was, his plans for us. Now we were in the middle of a life-altering circumstance. But we committed ourselves to put God first. We remained financially faithful to God, as hard as that seemed. Proverbs 3, 5 tells us this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. We had to have faith, trust, and believe. You see, we trusted in his promises. We had faith in him, and during that time, I was doing side work, an odd job, but he met all our financial needs. Every time there was a need, I always had work. My wife and I, we learned so much about our faith, what it meant to truly put our faith in God and the promises and plans for us. During that time of that major storm, we were so plugged into church, we were learning, we were growing, and I can honestly say and I know my wife would agree with me. During that time of, difficult time of difficulty, our marriage has never been stronger and our relationship with God has never been stronger. But I believe that only became because we truly put our faith in God and his plans for us. Now, don't misunderstand me. <laughs> Times were hard, man. We got frustrated. And I can't tell you the number of times my wife, God lover, would just say, God, enough. <laughs> oh, time and time again. She said, we've learned enough. There was lots of frustration and questioning. Almost two and a half years I was out of work. But in God's time, things happened. We just continued to put our faith in him and his plans for us. Now, eventually doors began to open and the right job came along. You see, our faith is like an anchor. And in, in one of those last songs, Jason had, had sung about that anchor. And, and fishermen know that the, the, the need for an anchor, and an anchor placed correctly, will hold you through the toughest storms. And our faith in God and his promise for us is that anchor. However, often we, we really don't believe that he wants to be involved in our day-to-day -day lives. And then we begin to place our faith in other things. 
We place our faith in our job, our family, our friends, our relationships. We work harder at our relationships with others and our job and our families than we do with our relationship with Jesus. Yeah, that little bit of faith will save us, but little faith keeps us from being all we can be in Jesus. Little faith restricts how God can use us to fill, fulfill the purpose of our existence, and that is to glorify him. Christians with little faith never allow God to use them in the way that he wants. What are you going to miss out on? What blessing are you missing out on because of your lack of faith? You see, this, this is where the enemy loves to spend time. He knows that if he can keep us distracted, focus on other things, our faith will be stagnant and not growing. We excuse ourselves into complacency. God, I'm too busy with work or with the kids or whatever it may be. Plain and simple, we do not make growing our faith or relationship with Jesus the priority. When I start feeling depressed or struggling in the middle of those storms, it's often because my faith is weakened and I'm not turning to Jesus. In my mind, it's, I've got this. I can fix it. I can control it. I don't need God's help with this. Even though I know that God can do all things. And I know he can and will bring me through those trials of life. And even knowing that fact, I still have a hard time moving past what I can do by myself. I let the enemy in my head, believing I don't need God's help with this. Jesus warns us, and in John 10.10, 10, this is his warning. The thief or the enemy comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. And we make it so easy. So how do we fight that? Well, Paul. Paul is always good with this. Paul tells us in Ephesians 6.11, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the devil. And in 16, he goes on to say, in addition to all, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. Again, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the devil. In addition to all, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish the flaming missiles of the evil one. Now, how is that from a promise from God? If your faith is lacking, and you feel weak, you need to know that you're not alone. I've been there many, many times. So has most Christians, most people who follow Christ. It can be so hard to stay strong in the faith when the world is constantly beating you down. When you're feeling that, remember what Jesus said in John 16, I have said these things to you, that in me you have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Now, tribulation. <laughs> oh, boy. July 22nd, 2016 was one of the greatest days of our lives. It was also one of the worst. We got our first grandson, our second grandchild on that day. And after about eight hours of labor, our son-in-law came into the waiting room, and we knew something was wrong. He told us there was complications with the delivery and that they were going to have to transfer him to another hospital's neonatal or NICU for treatment. You see, when Gunner was delivered, he was not breathing. His umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck twice, and they didn't know how long he was oxygen deprived. They needed to begin treating him for asphyxia and hypoxia, among numerous other things. There was no way of knowing how much damage was done to the brain and the other parts of the body, and the long-term prognosis was difficult to be determined. The possibilities included MS, severe mental retardation, to being 100% healthy. See, the treatment consisted of placing him in a medically induced coma, giving him morphine, putting him in a cooling bed for 72 hours to lower his core body temperature while giving him high doses of oxygen. We were not prepared for this. We couldn't comprehend what now lied ahead of us for the rest of Gunner's life. We were angry, we were confused, we were mad at God. Our faith was wavering. We needed to be reminded that we were never promised a storm-free life. Yeah, there was hundreds of people, hundreds of people praying for Gunner. And after 72 hours,
They, they <laughs> sorry, they brought him out of his coma. They started running tests. They did transfusions. They did evaluations. And it was on the morning of the sixth day that Shelly, who is our prayer warrior, was once again on her knees praying. This day proved to be a turning point in our faith struggle. Her heart and her prayers were of a different attitude. She was praying and just surrendered to God. She prayed for acceptance without blame that no matter the outcome or limitations, we would cherish and help care for this precious baby. We had no idea what what, uh, God's plans were. We just had to trust and place faith in him. It was at that point we truly surrendered our hearts and our minds, and we truly began to change. You see, again, it's easy to be a Christian and put on the happy face when things are going good. But when the storms or the trials come, what happens to that faith? If Jesus isn't our foundation, our anchor, our foundation will crumble. But if Jesus is our foundation, we can lean on him, stand strong, and survive those storms. That storm rocked us to our core. Our faith has never been more challenged. Just a side note. Uh, Gunner is our true miracle and blessing. He's a happy and healthy six-year-old that will be probably running around in here when we get done asking Papa for a donut, which he'll get that. (laughs) But we all have different crises. We all struggle and storms. This was just just one of ours. God used this because, God used this and because of it, our faith is much stronger today we can share of God's miracles in our life and we have been more prepared for that next storm and they will come. Isaiah 40, 31 says this, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Those who trust in the Lord. To this day, we don't know the reasons why or what God's plan is. I do know that going through that storm and learning to rely on him has only made my faith that much stronger and prepared us for that next storm. But remember this, when those storms come, often the weakness of our faith comes. I don't know what the storms are that you're struggling with or the testing of your faith, but I do know this, if you truly surrender and give it over to God and build your foundation on Him and His promises, you can withstand the storm and your faith will only become stronger. The blessings from those storms can be incredible. I know from personal experience that the greatest growth in my relationship with Jesus has come during those trials when I learned to lean on Him the most. I didn't realize it at the time, but when I look back, I see God's hands on every aspect of it. We were never promised an easy path. James, I love James. I love the book of James. I know I shouldn't have a favorite in the Bible, but I do. (laughs) I love James because James is simple and practical, and I can understand it. And James puts it this way in James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Now, how many of you have ever said, I wish I had more faith, faith to trust God to handle my problems, faith to trust God to meet my needs, faith to follow God's plans for my life, faith to stop worrying about the future, and faith to obey God when I don't understand. Well, guess what? That's what God wants. He wants us to learn to walk by faith and to lean on him. Now, about six, eight, six or eight weeks ago, I, I, if you were here, you, you got a chance to see uh, Mark from the 360 mission. And there was an example of faith in his presentation that has struck me. It struck me to the core. It struck me so hard. And for those of you that weren't, 360 Mission is a ministry that we now support. It's planting pastors in their native country. We are now sponsoring two pastors, one in Tanzania and one in China. And in Mark's presentation, there was a lot of pictures, and, and there was a ton of pictures in Tanzania, and they were all festive and joyful and bright colors and smiley faces. And then there was only a few pictures 
from China. And you've got to understand that China is, is a closed country. And, and in Mark's presentation, there was these two pictures, and one of those pictures was, was of a room, and it was maybe the size of our cafe. It was a, a, a block building room. The windows were, were all blacked out. And in this picture was of a group of pastors. There was 35 pastors on their knees praying in hiding. You see, each of these pastors have been beaten and imprisoned for their faith. We have no idea what that is like. And it struck me what incredible faith they must have and what they were willing to sacrifice and be subjected to for their faith. Wow. Yeah, I got convicted. You see, if you're struggling with a lack of faith, building a stronger faith will help your faith grow. The best way I know to strengthen your faith is through spending time in the Word and in prayer. You see, prayer is our chance to spend time with God. How cool is that? Reading the Bible goes hand in hand with talking to God. And it's there for you when your faith is struggling. Psalms 34.4 says this, I prayed to the Lord and He answered me. He freed me from all my fears. And in Philippians, we find this in Philippians 4, 6. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. See, when you're struggling and facing storms and your faith is weak, I encourage you to do what my wife did. Spend time on your knees with God. He's waiting and He's listening. Trust in God and trust in his plans. And I'm going to leave you with this. Remember God's promise in Isaiah 41.10. And this is what it says. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will hold you up in my victorious right hand. Now, how is that for a promise? Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for the blessings that you pour on us. I thank you for those decisions that we had last week, God. God, I thank you that you help us to grow our faith. I thank you for those storms, God, that that, that just brings us that much closer to you, Father God. I just pray that we learn to rely on you more and more during those times of struggle, Father God. And I thank you again for all that you continue to do for us in your precious name. Amen. Now, if, uh, if you uh, want to know more about having a personal relationship with Jesus, grab one of the pastors, Jason or Tim, grab one of the leadership members, grab myself, and we'd love to talk to you about that. And if you're in, in the middle of one of those storms right now, grab one of our prayer team members. They'll be up here. They would love to be praying for you and praying with you as you're walking through those storms. So again, thanks for joining today. And with that, Tim... I'm going to give it back to you. All I got to say is awesome. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thank you. God bless you all. Have a great week. Prayer team will be up here. If you want prayer for anything, we love to pray for our people. If God's been speaking into your heart this morning, and I know he has mine, we're here for you to talk, to pray, whatever. So God bless. Have a great week.